so it's just another beautiful day with another electronic lesson. All right. It's start to move from our DIY PWM generator to something more professional. Wait, but before that, let's not forget our sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay. It's your one-stop solution based on the fact they have all kinds of PCBs, 3D printing, CNC, sheet metal, or are available on their website. You will find a link on the description with their website. Also, every new register, they will have $5 to spend for PCB boards. So basically, with about $5, you can, you can order around 10 PCBs, and all you have to do is to pay for the postage. Now, we check the quality of the PCBs, and I'm definitely impressed. So we're going to use PCB way on the future. Proper nice quality. Yep. Now, let's go back to our uh, PWM generator, a digital one, so we can control more precise the frequency and the duty cycle. Now, if something interested, I will leave a link on the description with this uh, PWM generator, which is this one. So it's about five pounds and uh, basically you, you order, uh, you order a PWM uh, signal generator, but it's saying modules. So on the beginning, I thought, you know what? They messed up my order because they sent me free PWM generators. But now I don't believe it's a mistake because I test them and uh, everyone has a different uh, wave shape. So uh, this is like a square, normal one, and this is like tri triangular, and this, this is something else. So basically on the five pounds, you will get like three of this. So it's time to say goodbye and let's test the new one. We can just solder the wire, the plus and minus. So we solder our PWM generator. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Can we test it? Yep. Let me connect the power supply. And we have picture. Yeah. I can't believe. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see you have the frequency and the duty cycle, but okay, strange on the screen. You can see? Yeah. Uh, kind of weird. <laughs> so we have the PWM output. So check there. Mm. Like perfect. Now yeah. change the frequency and the duty cycle. Uh, all right. The uh, yeah, that's that's the frequency. Yes. Yeah, yeah. that's going down. It's check here the frequency. Check here, 146 uh, kilohertz. Yeah. So go down. You can keep pressed. Oh. Yeah. So check there. The frequency is mm. changing. Mm -hmm. You can see. Yeah. Yeah, we can see it's changing. Yeah, get back to the normal sheep. Yeah, like 150. They said yeah. this must be 150. Yeah. About there, 148. Duty cycle. The duty cycle. Uh, okay. And check there. You can see how it's changing. Oh, yeah. oh it changes so fast. Yeah, it is. Now it says 100. Yeah, it goes on the other way. Oh, you wow. can see? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Great. So it's working fine. Let's connect it to our MOSFET gate. Hmm? Okay. Yeah, that will be interesting. Okay, so we connect the PWM generator on the with the drain with the gate of the MOSFET. Now I'm gonna check the signal on the drain, yeah? Okay, now start adjusting and follow the current, see what is happening with the current. So at 12%, look at that, it's, a, it's like your heartbeat. Yeah, but you have to pay attention on the current because what you increase there is actually the current. And the current is on the screen. Oh, so that's 40 million? Yes. Go Seven higher. Eight? You can see the amplitude is going yes. up. Yes. <laughs> so what is the duty cycle right now? Uh, it's 26%. 26%. Okay, let's check something together. So I want to keep in mind, or better, adjust to uh, 100 milliamps. Check the current on the screen and uh, change the duty cycle and make it 100 milliamps. Uh, 
So you see, it's 100 milliamps, yeah? Yeah. Just to know from where we are starting. Let's check the voltage on the output. So check the voltage on the output. Um, from the capacitor. Yeah, from where to where? From, from where to where? From ground. Yes. I mean, capacitor from minus to plus. Of the capacitor, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So check. From Check, please. From ground, here the minus. Yes. To here. Yeah. And is 18 volts. 18 volts. Right? Yeah. Okay. Now let's leave this on one side. Okay. I want to keep in mind 100 milliamps, yeah? And 18, 18 volts. volts. Okay. okay. Now lower the frequency. Lower? Yeah. So we have here 50 hertz, right? Yeah. So check now, 50 hertz. With the same amount of current, check that, 100 milliamps, yeah? Mm -hmm. Check the output voltage. The output. Yeah. So what is the voltage? 12.22. So the input voltage is 12, and the output is 12.2. Yeah. But remember before, with the same amount of current... It was 18. 18. Yes. So why do you think that happened? Because I mean, we changed the frequency. I, I mean, obviously, because we changed the frequency. Yeah, but what changed? I know we changed. <laughs> I know, but what changed? Why, with the same amount of current, I get more output voltage compared with uh, high free with low frequency. So with high frequency, I get more output voltage. Yeah. Yeah. Why? I don't know because of the high frequency. Yeah, but that doesn't really explain. I have no idea. <laughs> is this is the efficiency? Okay. Yeah. So your 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 circuit is more efficient with high frequency than with low. Compared frequency. with the low frequency, yeah. That's the reason why the switching power supply they have some ceramic core. Okay. They are working with high frequency, but fifty hertz the transformers. They have like a metal uh, core. It's 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 a metal with some uh, magnetic properties, mm -hmm. but they are not using a 50 hertz something like that. Ceram this kind of ceramic. They're using a um, higher frequency. They this ceramic core goes with high frequency switching power supply, okay. but low uh, low frequency goes always with metal transformers. Okay. Now. I'm pretty sure 150 kilohertz, which is maximum on this one, mm -hmm. is not the best efficiency point for this circuit. So I'm uh, going to give you a task, yeah? Mm. So I want to jump the frequency probably from like, I don't know, just jump the frequency and try to find the best efficiency for this circuit. So you want me to hire the frequency? And find the point where the... I want to hire the frequency, adjust the duty cycle to hold on 100 milliamps, and find when is the max voltage output based on the 100 milliamps which we are feeding the circuit. That's how you find the efficiency. Yeah, but that sounds complicated. It's not. Lower the duty cycle to zero. Yeah, about zero. Okay, increase the frequency. Uh, there. 400 hertz, yeah? Yeah. Now increase the duty cycle to have like 100 milliamps. All right. You, you cannot. Wait. Go down. Yeah, like that. 100, okay. yeah, about 18 volts. Okay. So your circuit start being efficient. So you have 18 volts on the output, right? Yeah. Okay, increase the frequency even more. Right. So we have 400 hertz, just increase it to five kilohertz. 5,000 hertz. 5 kilohertz. Yeah. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, about there. Now increase the duty cycle to have like 100 milliamps. Oh, this one. Okay. You need to put more? Yeah, make it 100 Six, milliamps. 5, 8, 100. It's 100. Yeah. So what is the output voltage? 23. <laughs> so it, it's even more efficient compared with from where we start. We start with 150 kilohertz. 
right? Yeah, and it was 18. 18 volts. And now, now we have 24. 24. You see? Yeah. So actually, the efficiency is not like the max frequency. Yeah. You understand? So your circuit just become a lot more efficient. Yeah. So let's right. go from 5,000. Uh, I need to... Lower go. the duty cycle, lower yeah. Lower the duty cycle. Good. And now let's go... Uh, 10,000. Let's see what happened with 10,000. 10,000. So you had you had in mind what the voltage was here? Yeah, 24. It was 24. 24. Okay. 7, 8, 9. 10,000. 10. Okay, 10,000. <laughs> That's 10 kilohertz. Yeah. Now increase the duty cycle. To Keep an eye on the ammeter, oh, yeah? Yeah. So make it 100 milliamps. Can I one more? No, it's 130. Hmm. Hmm. So the efficiency just go down. You can see? Oh. I mean, we are like 22. Yes, and we had 24. We have 24, yeah. Okay, so the max efficiency is at 5 kilohertz, yeah? Mm -hmm. 5 kilohertz with 100 milliamps, you get a higher output voltage. Yeah. So that's efficiency. Now you understand why it was important for us to switch to something like that? Yeah. Because your circuit efficiency just go higher. So uh, let's write this down. 100 milliamps, 24.7 volts, right? Yeah. Okay, let's do it. 100 milliamps, 24.7 volts, right? Mm -hmm. At what frequency? 5 gigahertz, 5, five kilohertz. 5 kilohertz. Good. Now, I want more voltage. Let's increase the current, yeah? Mm -hmm. So increase the duty cycle, let's make it 400 milliamps. So like 420 milliamps, yeah? Let's say 400 milliamps, we have like 30 volts, right? Yeah. Okay, let's write that down. How much? 30. Volts. So we increased the current so many times, and actually the voltage didn't increase too much. Yeah. You can see? Mm -hmm. I want you to increase the frequency now. Increase the frequency? Yeah, li yeah, leave the duty cycle and increase the frequency. To what? Go over 10K. 10. Okay. Go more, go more. More? Yeah. Like 15. 15. 15. So it's 15 kilohertz, right? Yes. Now, change the duty cycle, make it 400 milliamps. Four hundred milliamps, what is the voltage? 34. <laughs> and now you understand? Yeah. So you have higher voltage just by increasing the, the frequency. frequency. So you see the efficiency changed. Yeah. So with 400 milliamps, we have a different efficiency. If the voltage is going down because the MOSFET is getting hot. Mm -hmm. yeah. But just to understand how the efficiency works. So at uh, 15K, we have how much? 34 volts. 34 volts. So now you understand? Yeah. So a switching power supply can have an efficiency on some point with uh, a specific output, specific frequency, specific current, yeah? Yeah. So you see we have a different efficiency if we are raising the current. Yes. That's the reason why, like on very high efficiency devices, like TVs, yeah, mm -hmm. TVs, mm -hmm. they have a big power supply to supply power uh, and high current to the TV. And when you power off the TV, you have a small power supply, we just see just supplying power for the microcontroller and LED, you know, the red mm -hmm. LED when you switch off the TV. That's the reason. Because each power supply has a different efficiency. And the oh, high power supply from the TV is not just enough just to cut the power down because it will not be efficient. That's the reason why they will fit a second low power supply. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So you see, you understand the efficiency? Yeah. I will tell you a secret. Even the engineers, when we are designing uh, and calculating the efficiency, it's so hard to calculate the efficiency. Actually, they are testing this. 
they are testing like how we are testing. Oh, really? So I it's mean, not like uh, they know exactly no, how, uh, what everything, frequency, what... Everything matters, yeah? The yeah. coil, the core, the, 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 the MOSFET speed, the MOSFET internal resistance, the, the, the output diode, are so many things which are hard, are so many variables, it's hard to calculate. So actually they just, you know, <laughs> they are doing it the same way we are doing it. Okay? It must be fun. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's all clear about the efficiency, yeah? Yeah. Okay, good. But by the way, this is a poor efficiency. I oh. mean, we increased the current four times to 400 milliamps. Yeah. And we got like what? Like six volts? Huh? Um, no, actually we got like 10. From 24 to 34. Oh, yeah, like 10 volts. 10 volts. Yeah, yeah, but it's yeah. still, <laughs> still low. Yeah. Okay.